Hi there and welcome to Create Your Light, the outdoor portrait session. My name is Brett, I'm a full-time photographer from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And I'm Katrin, I'm a professional photographer from Germany and we can't wait to show you around the town shooting nice portraits outdoor with uh, a lot of tips and tricks that we actually always use when we shoot. Yeah, some simple techniques that we're going to uh, share, share with you to help you take amazing portraits. Yeah. I have the Nikon Z5 and the 35mm uh, lens, the 1.8. Mm -hmm. And I have the Nikon Z6 II with the 85 1.8. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I also <laughs> like this one. I think we're going to swap a lot, huh? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And uh, we, the, te the techniques that we're going to show you uh, don't require a whole lot of other gear. This is it. Yeah, and you don't always need a studio for taking great shots. Just great light, great camera, great lenses. And a few nice tips and tricks. Right, let's get started. We've just arrived at our first location, which is in front of this beautiful theater in the center of town. And what we have to bear in mind is that we are shooting a portrait. Uh, I know it's a beautiful building, but it is really about focusing on the portrait. Yes, exactly. So whenever you are in a nice landscape or in a nice city, wherever you are, make sure that you focus on your subject. So the subject can, of course, be the landscape or the building itself. But as soon as you're there with a the person, make sure to frame the picture right and to focus on the subject. Yeah, you don't the want the two so. fighting for exactly, attention. Exactly, yeah. So there are ways that you're going to photograph a portrait in an environment. And I think the most important thing that you need to look for is great light as well as the right focal length. So at this location, we can show you how to combine the environment with the portrait. We're going to be making use of the 85mm 1.8 as well as the 35mm 1.8 and maximizing those lenses' properties to create the perfect portrait. When shooting on the 85 1.8, I am going to be shooting on 1.8, which is going to mean that the background is going to be totally out of focus. It is a great portrait lens, but you're not bringing much of the environment into it. I like that and I, and I shoot like that often, but because we're in such a gorgeous environment, I do want to incorporate the background a little bit. It is all about balance. So the 35 mil is a great lens to use for that, to allow for the slightly wider angle. So basically when we put both pictures next to each other with both different lenses, we can see that the 85 just loses the background and the 35 actually brings it a bit more into the picture. Yeah, it's still soft. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's still soft and it's still blurry because 1.8 is quite open. So you still achieve this blurry and very nice bouquet look. So it all depends on your own personal preferences. I like the out of focus background, but uh, some people like to have a wider angle. It really depends on what you like. So when you're shooting with the 35 lens, just be careful with the corners and don't put the face in the corners because of distortion. So take care, the body is fine, but the face should always be in more centered, more in the middle of the picture. You're absolutely right there, Catherine. Uh, but you do want to strike a balance. You don't want the subject right in the middle uh, because you do want to have a little bit of negative space so that brings you into the environment. Yes. So speaking of negative space, uh, I think it's really cool to have uh, a situation where you have your subject off center uh, so that on the, on the one side of your image, it's like opening a window to the environment. Yeah, and either you hate it or you love it. I personally like it a lot. And in this uh, example, it also looks like kind of a vignette because of the trees and the shadows. Yes, so I really yes, like yes, that. Yes, yes, really nice. <laughs>
When you start shooting portraits, of course it's very important to get spontaneous and real emotions and reactions from your model. And uh, the first thing I would recommend is to always put the eye and face detection on because this is really, really, really good. The technology actually is so reliable that I can always focus on the interaction with my model while shooting, which is really cool because I don't have to focus on always focusing right. <laughs> it's a lot of focus. But yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but you are right, you are right. Uh, I think in terms of getting the spontaneous, natural reactions, uh, it's important to develop a technique that allows you to get those spontaneous reactions. I mean, when somebody just says to you, smile, it's like, oh, Not always on. working, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I have a technique that I use, and I haven't told you about this yet, Catherine, but I'm going to use it on you right now. Okay. Uh, I hope it works. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so look straight into the camera as mm -hmm. if I'm photographing you. And give me your Monday morning face. <laughs> Monday morning face. I like Monday morning. You like Monday morning. Yeah. Okay, that's great. <laughs> Can you see that I've got a bit of a reaction from her? All right. So if you like Monday mornings, maybe give me your Wednesday morning face. Party face. <laughs> Party face. Okay. <laughs> When does your business fail? Oh, you work on the weekends, right? I work every day, so actually. All right. So, give me your give me your working face. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see that I've got reactions from her, and they are authentic, and and you can see that she is a happy girl. So those are the kinds of pictures that you're going to get. Posing can be the most difficult thing when it comes to shoot people because they might feel a bit alone or like not secure in front of the camera when they just stand somewhere. So it's actually very helpful to like give them some tips how to pose, where to put their hands and stuff like that. Yeah, giving direction does make them yeah. feel a lot more confident. And uh, you know, creating again authentic reactions mm -hmm. by telling people what you want them to do uh, can really help. So we're going to show you a few simple techniques that are going to make it so easy for you to take authentic portraits. First of all, you could let your model or your subject lean on something or sit down on stairs or a bench or maybe there's a great wall where you can lean or pose them. That's really nice. Yeah, and then in terms of hands, if you're holding something yeah. uh, that works, uh, you know, arms folded, that can also uh, work as well. Mm -hmm. There are a variety of things that you can do. Uh, what I always do with hands, if I'm photographing a, a, a model or somebody who, you know, wants to feel a little bit more mm -hmm. intimate, then uh, I ask them to put their hands together and rub them like they're putting Ooh, that's a good idea. Know, uh, cream on their hands so it looks a little bit <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. Nice and authentic, you get spontaneous yeah. Yeah. reactions yeah. from that. You see, it's also always about distracting people. So actually, they should not think too much. They should just react naturally. One last tip with regards to creating great portraits is to keep your camera at eye level. That's the rule of thumb. If you're, if you're shooting from a low angle, uh, it feels like your subject is dominating. And if you feel like if you're shooting down on your subject, it's a little bit sub subservient. So keep it at eye level, great rule. Of course, you can always break the rules, but actually, this is a great place to start. this nice little alley which actually is perfectly lit for getting really nice and pretty portraits. Right? Yeah, it's like the holy grail <laughs> of portrait lighting. Yeah, it is because the sunlight is just coming in, bouncing from that white wall into our faces. And this kind of light is perfect because we still stand in the shade, but the light is coming in like a big soft box, lighting the faces very like, how do you say, without distractions? Or Basically perfect lighting. Perfect lighting. <laughs> and um, yeah, we don't have any crazy shadows in our faces. It's nice and soft. It is studio quality lighting. You'd think that the production team had lit us up, but it's totally natural. So always try to find a spot like this, 
So it can't actually get any no. better. And as soon as you pose your models or your subjects there, make sure that you always point the nose into the light so that the light is coming from actually the side of the nose. <laughs> yeah, basically, uh, in terms of the geeky lighting tip, uh, it's called broadside and narrow side lighting. If you look at my face right now, 50% of the light is coming from the right hand side and 50% uh, is in the shade, in the, in the shadow. Uh, if I turn my face away from the light, you'll see now that most of my face is lit, making me look a little bit fuller. It's broadside lighting. I prefer to look a little slimmer. So if I turn my face towards the light, you will see now that you're photographing the shadow side and the, the, the narrow side of my face is now lit. So Catherine, you are absolutely right. Make sure that your model or your subject has their nose pointed towards the direction of the light. So I'm the lucky one right now. Yeah. <laughs> I have the perfect <laughs> light right now. <laughs> and by the way, the camera that we are talking to right now uh, is the camera that I'm using to photograph uh, Catherine in this environment. Uh, I've set the picture control to monochrome because I think it looks really, really nice under these conditions. And obviously I've got all the uh, settings that you can see there with the autofocus uh, where it's got face detection, making it so easy for me to photograph under these conditions. So when you are outdoors with your camera, then just yeah, try and learn to see light, to see these kind of lighting situations. And this one is kind of a studio lighting situation. So actually you don't really need a studio to get great portraits. And um, yeah, let's take some shots, huh? Absolutely, let's go. <laughs> just walking around, founding some really nice spots actually for shooting some great portraits, which are these uh, beautiful flower walls, which I actually never saw before. And um, I first took some shots of you in the direct sunlight, which turned out pretty harsh because direct sunlight is not always the best light to shoot in. No. You could see wrinkles and you have shadows under the eyes, which are pretty dark. Well. Yes, sweaty yeah. spots. So actually, we went, uh, yeah, we went past In that. The open shade, yeah. Into so the open shade. When you want to look for light that is the best light for portraiture, find open shade. Now, open shade is essentially where you have an area that is shaded from the sun, but there are other areas reflecting light mm -hmm. back in. So the catch lights in your eyes, you've got little sparkles. You know, if it's a completely overcast mm -hmm. day, yeah. that's not open shade. No. Open shade is on a sunny day, looking for areas in the shade that allow you to shoot beautiful soft portraits exactly yeah with great light sometimes even white walls which are on the next side of the street on the other side of the street that's correct yeah, that's right <laughs> could also reflect sunlight which comes into the eyes or yes. into the face like a reflector yeah. that's also nice and then just a little tip set your white balance to shade because you're going to get the right colors because we are in the shade so Brad just mentioned one word, which is catch light, which we always use, but you might not know what it is. It means that we try to catch light actually, which comes from kind of reflecting walls or some reflections from somewhere. Actually, it could be windows, could be walls, could be just the sun reflecting from somewhere. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and a lot of uh, when, when you first start out photography, the way you see how a photographer has lit the subject is you look at the catch lights in the eyes and you can see how the photographer has lit that subject. So basically always go for open shade when the sun is out because that's actually a safe shot and it's very pretty and very nice light. Yeah and speaking of uh, safe shots the great thing about the Nikon Z cameras is what you see is what you get. So looking through the viewfinder is what yeah. you're going to capture. It shows you the exposure, uh, it shows you the, the color. The and shadows. Yeah, absolutely, the contrast and the focus points. 
So I got another tip actually, which is like when you set your exposure and everything right, you can always also use the flip screen to work with. And I do that a lot of times so I can move freely and I always have one hand free to give directions. And another great advantage of using the LCD uh, to compose your shot is that uh, you're, you're able to have eye contact with your subject, which uh, makes for a much more intimate portrait. So Brad, actually you use the 35 millimeter and the 85 millimeter. So what do you think are the differences? What do you, did you get? <laughs> well, I really enjoyed photographing you with the uh, 85, but the flower wall, as gorgeous as you are, the flower wall is also really nice. I wanted to get a bit more of a wider view and uh, getting a bit more of the environment into the shot. So the 35 worked perfectly for that. And it, it's nice to be able to have the two next to each other. You know, if you're putting together a holiday album or, uh, yeah. you know, keeping your photographs in yeah. your house, framing them, really nice to have the environmental shot and then the nice uh, portrait shot. Yeah, I actually like both of them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I have a surprise for you. You do? I also want to get some cool shots of you in front of the flowers because... Yeah, that'll be cool. Why should it always be only the girls? <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. talk about two topics which there are picture control and snapbridge. Nikon's built-in picture control uh, is essential in terms of my workflow. I love to get everything right in camera and uh, being able to adjust the picture controls helps out so so much. Uh, I much prefer being behind the camera than behind the computer. It's, it, uh, it makes my editing time much much faster and so much better to get it right in camera. And it doesn't mean that you have to decide between shooting in RAW or in JPEG. You can also shoot both, which I actually love a lot because I actually put uh, picture control black and white on my shot. So I still have the picture in color on the RAW picture, but I can see contrast and I can see shadows directly on my screen. And that's really good for working creativ creativ creative creative <laughs> creatively you did right creatively <laughs> with the light. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, Catherine uses it uh, to see contrast, whereas I want to shoot in black and white. And that's why I put the picture control setting to monochrome. But let's have a look at the very different uh, styles that you can actually uh, choose from. And yeah, you just have to press the, uh, on the I button to get into the I menu. And then you have set picture control. And there are very yeah, several styles which are standard, neutral, vivid, monochrome, portrait, landscape, yeah, it goes on and on and, and on, on and on. <laughs> There's some yes. really creative ones there as well. Yeah, and you can still play around in the separate ones and add contrast or like add saturation, play around with that. So it's really a great option to work on your picture in the camera. And basically personalize that picture control. If you, for example, go into monochrome and then you push the button down, then you will get into another menu, which shows you a lot of varieties actually, which uh, there are, for example, sharpening or clarity, contrast, brightness, and effects also. You can like add or reduce colors like yellow, orange, red, green, for example. Basically and tweaking it to be yes. exactly what you need. Yeah, exactly. And that's really, really cool to get different effects on your pictures. So essentially that means that your image is basically instantaneously edited in camera. Uh, in talking about instantaneously, that brings me to Snapbridge. Getting my pictures from my camera onto my phone almost immediately is such an advantage in this uh, day and age of instant gratification. It is. Yes. When we were shooting before in that open shade, you took a really nice image from me and I really wanted to <laughs> have it right now on my phone. And Snapbridge is the best option to just get it. 
It's very easy to install the SnapBridge app. Obviously, just go to the App Store, download the app, install it, connect your camera, uh, and there's a whole variety of options that you have within the app. You can download your images continuously to your phone. So as you're shooting, the images are getting downloaded to your phone. Uh, for a pro, that works really, really nicely to get the images to the client as fast as possible. And uh, obviously, for uh, people who are hobbyists and they want their images on their social media or on their phone, so you know, it's so quick, so easy. It is, and you can directly use it for social media, for example, or to send it to your family or friends. Yeah, while we're sitting right now, you're getting likes and follows because of my picture. <laughs> Wrapping it all up, we could say that Picture Control and Snapbridge are great friends. They really match, and it just makes you fast in your work. Yeah, getting it straight out of camera, yeah. onto your phone, out to your friends and family. And by the way, all of the pictures that were shown in this tutorial were straight out of cam using picture control. To summarize outdoor portraits, the most important thing is to rely on your camera. The technology within the Nikon Z system is amazing. Because of that, you can always concentrate on the person in front of your camera. So speaking of connecting with uh, your subject, I think it's really important to make sure that when you're shooting portraits, that your subject is the hero of the shot. Make sure to find a nice spot with great light. We were talking about facing the light so that the light comes in from the right side. Absolutely. And when you have that great light, use the right picture control settings to get it right in camera. And finally, get that picture out to the person and make the person happy. These tutorials are all about inspiration. So take the knowledge that we've given you, tweak it to your personality, go out and shoot. Hashtag? Hashtag create your light. And we cannot wait to see your results. So don't hesitate to upload your pictures. And yeah, thank you very much, Brad, for the nice uh, day. <laughs> thank you, Catherine. And if you want to learn more, there are tons of videos at the Nikon School. So just go online and check them out. You will learn a lot. And yeah, that's it, basically. So just go out, shoot, and enjoy your cameras. Thank you. That's a wrap. <laughs>